Hello all you beautiful people and welcome back to EUC Way of Life. This here is a range test on the Bogota A2. I wanted to show you all a discrepancy. So when you turn this wheel on, the mileage there will actually show zero miles until you right the wheel and the motor engages. But if you look, that says 33.8, so that's what we're going to base it off of today. And if you look at the app here, 100%, it says 20.51. So there's quite a bit of a difference there, but we will use the GPS tracker app, and we will follow the range on the EUC world as well as the range on the wheel and see what all the differences are at the end of this. Enjoy the video. I do have to say that the A2 is definitely a really good training wheel. Probably one of the best that I've had to offer or had a chance to work with so far. It is very nimble. It's a very narrow wheel. It's super easy to stand on. It's not all kind of jerky and super responsive like the M104 which I had a feeling that this would be very similar to, and I actually almost didn't order the Bagode A2. I was waiting for a while, and I was like, ah, it's the same specs, the same motor, it's just a bigger frame and tire. I don't really see the point since I already have an M104. But after training Chad here, or letting him ride this wheel, after training a couple people on this wheel, letting a few others try it that have had M104s, Everybody is in agreement that this wheel is nothing like the M104 and is substantially easier to ride. I think it's a fun little wheel. The only problem that I've had, and it was the biggest thing I experienced during this video, is not having a trolley handle for it. It is an absolute pain in the butt when you end up going to like a grocery store or something. Yeah, you could throw it in the cart, but I don't like to do that because the wheel's dirty. Carts and baskets and stuff are meant for food and people's things to go in, so I really don't like to do that. But you're either kind of hunching down and pushing on it, which luckily with my seat there, it's a little higher, so it's a little easier, or you can actually pick it up. So if you press the kill button on the top and lift it up immediately, the wheel will not spin, and you have a chance to kind of carry it around by that handle that's on the top without any issues. If you do tilt it back at all and it starts to beep, and then you go to pick it up, it'll ride itself and the motor will spin. I have noticed that the button on top is a disengage and re-engage button too, so you can press it once to disengage it, but if you accidentally pressed it when you were stopped and it disengaged the motor, you could press it again and it'll re-engage it rather than having to tilt it back, wait for the beeps, and then tilt it back up. But it's got pretty wide pedals. You guys know the pedals that are on it are the RGB pedals. They are no different than the pedals that come with it other than the acrylic inlay. They're CNC and they have the RGBs. Size-wise, spikes-wise, they're the same pedal. So if you look at it from, you know, vertical downward angle, the pedal hangers actually make the pedals stick out quite a bit, which when they're folded up, they're practically flush, which is easy to toss in your car or your trunk or whatever. But they are wide enough out there where you can see me standing there. There's a gap between my feet and the wheel, and that's not because the wheel is so wide, you kind of have a wide stance on the pedals. It's just a comfortable stance with plenty of room for your feet. I wear a size 13, and I have zero issues with this wheel. Obviously, fatigue-wise, riding around super slow, which this video was filmed about 10 to 15 miles an hour. Some of the cruising was 16, 18 miles an hour. It is grueling, you guys. Doing the range test on other wheels is... Kind of fun, depending on the location. Here, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a different tour around Olympia. I've done the lake and the waterfall quite a few times, so I took you guys up to the capital here to show you around, and there's actually a bunch of link trails that could take you from Olympia to Lacey to Tumwater, out to Yelm and Rainier and to Nino and Chehalis, which are out, out in the farmland outside the city. So it's pretty cool that we actually have those paved trails here and we have the ability to kind of just cruise wherever we want with these wheels. 
And, you know, it, going this slow, it definitely causes foot fatigue. I know that is an issue with new riders. One of the gentlemen I met up with a few days ago, he said the same thing. He's been riding for a couple of months, and he's like, I can't go more than six to eight miles. And I told him, you know, you can try adjusting the pedal angle as far as the pitch forward and backward. Sometimes that helps. Shoes make a huge difference. And, you know, stop and taking breaks, kind of stretching your feet or walking around. But you get used to it. Doing range tests, you definitely go through the fatigue and you get used to it or you work your, th your way through that numbing foot pain. So Chad said the same thing. He was like, if I didn't love riding so much, he's like, I'd be in that same boat. But, you know, I, I, I ride so much and I like it that, you know, I kind of just ride through my feet going numb or tingly or whatever. But taking a break somewhere, you know, whether it's grabbing a drink, having some water, you know, it, it helps a lot with that foot fatigue. So just for any new riders out there. There is quite a few things you could do to try to mitigate that foot fatigue and you'll start riding long distances in no time. You know, this wheel isn't as small and packable as the M104, which is why I didn't want to get it. But now that I've been riding it around, I don't know what it is. If it's a board thing, it's the bigger tire, but it just feels like it has substantially more power than an M104. And it is way, way more fun to ride around and I cannot explain it but it is a fun fun wheel quick update we are at 85 percent battery EUC world says 3.6 miles that's the range on the wheel and the GPS app says 5.3 miles so quite a bit of a difference that we're tracking here keep you all updated Quick little tour here on the trail. This is one of the link trails. I mean, you could get to grocery stores from these trails. You get to downtown from these trails. There's maps on a couple little interchanges and stuff where you could pick a direction to go, and all the signs tell you everywhere they go and the distances, which is pretty cool. So it works really well to ride around on this kind of stuff, doing range tests like I'm doing here on the A2. Obviously doing one with, like, the Commander Mini Pro when I get it, or when I did the one on the Sherman, I went out to the ODD trail. Here's kind of a map here that shows you. Sorry about the footage, not the greatest, but you guys can pause it, kind of take a look at it. But that's just a quick update. In case anybody was wondering, like Marty mentioned in his videos, the voltage sag on the A2 is quite substantial to be, you know, at a resting voltage above 70% and I can't go over 20 miles an hour. I hit 22 there and it keeps beeping at me as soon as I hit 20. So just another update for you. You guys could see the battery voltage there is climbing. It was at 70. It's already back up at 72. So very interesting, very fun little wheel. 73 now. All right, everybody. We're out here at the Link Trail. Not sure which one. I tried to get it earlier on the map so you guys can see all the paved trails we have out here that take you from town to town and city to city. If you look here, the GPS app, this is the one that Marty suggested, and it's pretty fancy and cool, but I have noticed some discrepancies against it and EUC World. So down here at the bottom, we're at 11.45 miles total. If you look at the EUC World, we're at 7.81 which is why well, you got nearly a three mile discrepancy there. And if you look at the wheel here, I'm at 46.3 and we started at 33.8, I think. So according to the wheel, I've gone almost 13 miles. According to EUC World, I've gone 7.8. And according to the GPS app, we've gone 11.45. So right now the GPS app is definitely the closest to the wheel, but as you can see, I don't know if you guys saw that, but I started at 50% when I stopped and it's now up to 57%. So there is a lot a voltage sag on this Pagoda A2, but it's puttering along. It does beep at me at 20 miles per hour. So unfortunate, but we're cruising around at about 15, 16. So I'll keep you guys posted as we move along. This is about the point we decided to turn around. 
with all the discrepancies between the apps and looking at the battery percent, we figured this would be a good time to kind of swing back and start heading back towards downtown in the car. Just didn't want to risk it. I did get stranded on the S22 twice now, so I did not want to do it for a third time, even though Chad had plenty of battery. He could have went and got the car, but I was like, nah, man, I think you're right. We should head back. Taking a call. As you can see, everybody, we're getting beeps if we try to pull too much on this little beast. If I cruise up to 20 miles an hour, it still doesn't beep till 20, but if I try to take off fast, it'll beep when I hit about 16. This guy over here on his S18 be getting like 40 plus miles on a charge. I don't know how he's getting so much range on that thing, but that's my old wheel, and apparently weight does make a difference, but I keep telling him speed does too, so, you know, here we are. On the A2 having a nice little ride doing the range test, but he's he's my backup in case I have to walk another wheel, which I haven't told you all yet, but I did a little ride around on the S22 Pro, the gold, and a freaking diet on me three miles from my car. This guy had to go to work, so he left me, and I had to walk the wheel back, and at 15% battery, it was at the point where I could no longer ride it. It was absolutely crazy that it was like that. Just not rideable. And then I started trolleying it and at 11% it started beeping just constantly. It'd walk it at two miles an hour. If I sped up to three, it would go beep, beep. And then after 10%, it just sat there and beeped the entire time. So King Sungs are great. However, they definitely don't let you use the full batteries. Whereas these, if you guys have watched my T4 range test video, I rode that thing down to 0%, kept riding, and decided to call it a day at 50 miles. So, really hoping that we could get 28 plus out of this thing. And we're back again. Look at this beautiful, beautiful stop. We were riding along the paved trail up there, and Chad saw this little offshoot, and we were like, we wonder if that goes down to the lake. There's birds singing out here. Lily pads are blooming out there. We got a beer with us. This guy's drinking and driving. Pretty sure it's illegal in this state. Yeah, there's the A2. She uh, holding up. I did want to give you guys an update though real quick. So, you know how you can push the pedals to make them light up? You see how that's not lighting up at all? Yeah, so when I mentioned at the, the beginning of the overview of this two weeks ago or whatever, that that button is super easy to push, it does get pushed when you stand on the pedals and that battery is dead. So just heads up on that. Here's where we're at on mileage. If you guys could see that, we decided to turn around because I'm scared. I mean, we, we don't know if we've gone 7 miles, 11 miles, or 12 miles, but here's the apps again. The GPS app says 13 and a half. EUC World says 9.2. And on this, we started out at 33.8. So on this, we've gone technically almost 15. So 15 versus 13 and a half versus 9.2. You guys be the judging call on that, but uh, enjoy the scenery. Can you hear the birds in the video? The mics on this suck, but they're like everywhere out here. So pretty, relaxing. All right, I'll catch up with you guys in a bit. It's quite amazing the little things you could find off these trails. Beautiful, beautiful place to ride. I'd definitely show anybody, take you on a tour, or even recommend trails if you're in the Olympia, Washington area. You can find stuff like this pretty much all over the place. Off-roading, paved stuff, just about anything for anybody. Oh, God! <laughs> I 
some thick gravel. Oh yeah, I was completely unfazed by it. I want to know what the songbirds are, darn it. In case y'all were wondering, I'm still doing 18 miles an hour and it is not beeping at me yet or slowing me down. But hey, look at this pond that used to be a lake, but it's drying out. It's abnormally hot here in Washington. All right, catch you guys in a bit. That branch almost hit me in the face. It's hanging down there. You guys, I don't know if most of you have ever seen a waterfall before, but look at that beauty. That is, that is one sexy waterfall. So yeah, we're just uh, out here cruising on the A2, doing the range test, and we came across this baddie, and she's, uh, might have to go stick my head in that later, so. Catch up with you guys in a bit. Just out here eating hills on this S18. Things down to like 60% battery and look at that. I don't know if you guys could see how steep that is, but that is quite impressive. I would attempt it on this. As you can see, we're not at 54 miles and got two bars, but I'm not going up that on this with that much battery. Don't trust it having someone with you out here on a range test is definitely a blessing. So big shout out to Chad for coming with me and doing this with me. You know, it, it took us about three, I think three and a half hours to get this entire thing done. There was obviously some stops. It wasn't riding the whole time, but it was grueling, but it was fun. You know, time does fly by when you're hanging out with people and riding around. So Big shout out to Chad. Thanks for coming with me, dude, and let me put you in all my videos recently. So enjoy the video, you guys. You know, this A2 is definitely fun. Look at this. Just wrecking some stairs on that thing. If you guys are wondering I'm on the A2, you'll just have to take a guess. It's definitely not there on the left. <laughs> Hello, welcome back everybody. We're still out here cruising the Bogota A2. Look at this wonderful sunset. I don't know if you guys could see the mountains in the back and then the city down there, but dang, it's a beautiful ride out here tonight. Absolutely fantastic. Weather is great. All right, so let's get into some wheel stats here. We're at 56.6 on the wheel, and I believe we started at what, 30? Was it 20? What I started at, I don't even remember at this point. 38 point something. Oh, so, island? yeah. I think said 33.6. 33.6. So we've gone a whopping 20 miles on the wheel. I'm losing track at this point because all these things are so off. On the GPS app here, it says we've gone 19.3. So this is definitely the closest to what the wheel is recording there. Probably pretty, pretty accurate there. And then EUC World here is that 14.17. So compare that to 20 miles and EUC World is quite a bit off. I know the A2 isn't an EUC World yet. I forgot to mention that earlier. This is technically registering as the Bogota M10-4, but same spec board, supposedly the same board and the same motor, just a larger tire. So I know the larger tire is going to cover more ground than the smaller tire on the M104. So that might actually be 
why there's such a substantial difference as far as EUC world and what the wheel is recording. So right now, I don't know if you saw it a second ago, it was at 12%. We're back up to 14%. And our total mileage so far is 19.3. I did forget to start recording when we stopped at the lake. So add about a mile or so to that. So we're at about 20. So if you add a mile to that, it matches this almost perfectly. So this GPS app is working pretty well. We're getting pretty good range. I got 27 on the M10-4, about the same average cruising speed. We've been doing about 15, 16 miles an hour with highs about 20, 22, but those are very, very quick highs. However, on the M10-4, I did keep that on a completely flat ground. There was no inclines at all. And if you look, we started way down there, so we zigzagged up this, and we have done a couple of hills on this trip. So this thing does eat battery on hills. Marty pointed that out in his video. But, you know, we're about seven miles shy of where we're at the M10-4. But we still got 14% supposedly. So we're going to see if we could get that five or so more miles. And I will keep you guys updated. Hello all you beautiful people and welcome back. I wanted to give you a quick update. So I popped into EUC World here. And when I first connected, when I got the wheel, A2 didn't exist. But if you look right there, it says Model A2. So it does not account for that tire being different on why, on why EUC World is 14 miles and the GPS app is nearly 20 and the wheel is also 20. So what's up with EUC World? I don't know. I have not been watching this to check if the speed is accurate, but it does say A2. You guys saw it. Go in there and scroll down. Where's that model right there? A2. All right. I will check back in with you guys when we get down to about 0% battery there. Which, mind you, it's difficult because there's so much battery sag. I'm going to start riding. That's going to drop down to like 8%, 5%. But we're going to be able to, you know, ride quite a bit. Come on, guys. You can't beat the view. Look at this. We're down to 5% while riding. Not sure how much further we're going to make it. But look at this view. Oh yeah, get it. Down to one bar on the wheel. I'm beeping if I go above 10 miles an hour. So, buttering along. It doesn't exist. It's a myth. Know if you guys could tell or not but we're at uh riding at one hold on let me pop me up on my watch we're at zero percent battery doing five and she beeping i'll give you all an update when i get back to the car if i make it to the car but we're riding at zero now everybody we're back if you hear it we're beeping at three miles an hour I'm trying to keep it about two because if you look out that way we're still about half to quarter mile from the car and I'm trying to make it all the way back at zero percent we already rode from the other side of the city at zero so I'm hoping we can make it cross your fingers everybody I'll give you total mileage here at the end Hello everybody, welcome back. Look at that view again. So we're over here riding at two miles an hour and it's been beeping for the last couple hundred feet. The parking lot is right there. We're almost there. Every time I hit a downhill though, it's kind of funny the beeping stops because I think it's regening a little bit. So we're, we're almost there. We're gonna make it. I just gotta keep it below three miles an hour now. 
But I mean, you can't complain about that view and sunset. So keep you guys updated here in a second. All right, everybody, we're back. We made it to the car over there. I actually can't believe this thing rode. Look it, it's at zero bars, 59.5. So if we had 36 point, 36, 33.6? 33.6. We basically went, what? 27, 26? Yep, 26 miles. But if we compare it to this, again, add about a mile to that because I forgot to start recording, that would be 23. So a couple miles off there. EUC World is still showing 16, which is absolutely completely inaccurate. Can you imagine? This we only got 16 miles. Even That'd be my, that bananas. Because even my EUC. Yeah, I don't think it's right at all. It's not even close. Average speed says 10.8. Top speed of 22.3. If we flip back, oh, if we flip back over to the other app here, where's my, where's my statistics here? Max speed is 17.89, average speed of, right here, 10.31. So average speeds, yep, cut that out of the video later. Average speeds is about the same, 10.8 versus 10.3. So how EUC World has nearly the same average speed and the same amount of time we've been riding, I don't understand why there's such a discrepancy in range there, but you guys be the judge on that. This is about 23 miles because that mile we missed or so. And this is about 26 miles. So three mile discrepancy. The M104 got 27 miles when I made it back to my driveway. And I did the same thing. I was riding that thing at 0% for a while. So I would say at full faith that this got about 26 instead of that 23. However, we did go up the hills over there and there was quite a other hills that we did go up and down so I would say that it is a good 25 to 26 mile wheel before you really start getting that speed reduction in issues so hope you guys all enjoyed the video hope you enjoyed the scenery and this guy just killing it on the S18 riding those rocks earlier and a bunch of those flights of stairs and obviously I'm not doing anything crazy like that on this little wheel I also don't have my jump pads on it today so stay tuned for the next video. I am going to release my Sherman S range test video here soon too. And the Commander Pro Mini is still lost in transit. It was supposed to be here two weeks ago now and still completely MIA with no update. But that will be coming soon. And I do still have an S19 on pre-order. So as soon as that ships, I will let you guys know. And as always, have a beautiful day, you beautiful people.